Hello and welcome to Freedom Watch. I'm Ashley Webster in for Judge Napolitano. Tonight, the latest poll on the race to become the Republican nominee to run against President Obama has the GOP scrambling, let's face it, nearly panicking ahead of the Iowa caucuses. The poll by public policy polling has Newt Gingrich rapidly dropping now to third and Congressman Ron Paul leading the pack in Iowa. It seems that Newt's loss is the Congressman Paul's gain. Now, Congressman Paul is trying to capitalize on the momentum, attacking some of his Republican challenges in a lengthy Tonight Show interview. How about Mitt Romney? He used to be governor of Massachusetts. Right. Maybe uh, that's what he should stay at. Being oh, governor. Sure. <laughs> How about Newt Gingrich? He maybe should run for Speaker of the House yeah. again. <laughs> uh, Michelle Bachman? She doesn't like Muslims. She hates Muslims. Oh, wow. yeah. Yeah, she hates them. She wants to go get them. Well, how about that? Some uncharacteristically tough language coming from Dr. Paul. And will turning to the attack help the Dark Horse candidate? Well, let's ask Jacob Hornberger. He is president of the Future of Freedom Foundation. And Jacob, well, he's always complaining he never gets enough coverage from the media. He's on The Tonight Show, for crying out loud. Well, that's right. I mean, things, the tides are turning a little bit. The media is recognizing that the... Uh, the American people, at least those in Iowa, are discovering that Ron Paul is different from these other big government Republicans, and uh, they're surging toward his campaign. They're learning what we've learned. We've learned about this man 25, 30 years ago. Yeah, he's but going principled. The... He's courageous. Uh huh. And well, he stands his ground. Well, he does. And now he's going on the attack. Uh, do you think that's a good ploy? Well, you know, the Tonight Show, you could tell that it was uh, there was some lighthearted moments there. Where there was an air of lightheartedness. There was some smiling. There was give and take. So it's hard to tell where Ron was really being deadly serious and where he was just playing a humorous, having a humorous exchange with Jay Leno. But clearly, well, like when he's talking about Bachman, he's drawing the line there. He's saying, look, we're, we're, we've bombed enough countries. We, we've killed enough people. It's time to bring the troops home. And Bachman is taking the opposite, opposite position. No, we need to bomb Iran. We need to start another war. We need to get more people angry at us. We need more terrorist retaliation. I mean, it's not exactly what she's saying, but that's the logical consequence. He's just drawing the distinction. And people are responding, saying we've had enough of this. And that's why they're going to his campa yeah, campaign. Yeah. Well, Jacob, let me just jump in here with the death of Kim Jong-il in North Korea. That really does bring uh, foreign policy back into the crosshairs. And let's face it, uh, Ron Paul has been severely criticized for basically his um, can't we all just get along approach um, towards Iran. And really, the country is being uh, would like someone who perhaps is stronger, who can stand up to the North Koreans, a mysterious country at best. Um, how would you respond to those critics about his foreign policy? Well, that's, that's exactly where people are surging to his campaign. They're recognizing that this, this imperialistic stand up to all these dictatorships while you're supporting other dictatorships just isn't working. And Ron's bringing a new paradigm to, to the country. He's saying, look, let's demobilize. Cold War is over. You know, we've got relations with Vietnam. We've got relations with China. Why not relations with Korea? Why not this stand down with this mobilization, perpetual crisis mindset and start looking toward diplomacy, looking to trade, looking to cultural interactions with groups instead of this militaristic bomb them at but all costs Jacob, cost Jacob, we know that Iran, for instance, is trying to build up its nuclear power. Do you really just want to put your arm around them and say, come on, guys, let's all get along? It simply doesn't work with some countries. Ashley, we heard this with the rock. Same thing. It's just act two of the same play. WMDs, Saddam's coming to get us, mushroom clouds over American cities, smoking gun. We've heard all this nonsense. It's bogus. It's, bo it's just as bogus as it was with Iraq. And that's what Ron's been saying. But absent that, look at who has who surrounded. It's American troops that have Iran surrounded. Who was it that knocked out their democratically elected prime minister in 1953 and installed a brutal dictator there for the next 25 years? I mean, no wonder these people are defensive. 
You know, we're not saying play Mr. Nice Guy. We're just saying stop the regime change operations, stop the invasion, stop the occupations, stop attacking democracy like the CIA did in Iran in 1953. All right, Jake, let me, I got one last question. Let's talk of get back to this country. And um, uh, why do you think he's going up in the polls? Is it just because of the independent minded Iowans? Um, and what's the biggest attribute do you think the voters find in him? He stands against out-of-control federal spending and debt. He's presented a plan for abolishing departments and agencies. Mm -hmm. People recognize he's not your standard big government conservative that preaches free enterprise mantras. He means what he says. He's sincere. He's credible. Uh, he's a nice guy. I mean, there's not an ounce of arrogance in this man. I've known him for 25, 30 years. He and his wife are two of the nicest people I've ever met. People are recognizing this is a different quality of candidate, and that's why I think they're surging to his campaign. All right. Very interesting. Jacob Hornberg, he's founder and president of the Future of Freedom Foundation. Jacob, thank you very much for joining us tonight. We